Hello, Aisha is one of the most common topics that get talked about on YouTube at the start and end of each tax year. But whether it comes to saving or investing, ISAs are probably one of the best options out there and they're a great tax-free tool for you to use. However, whenever it comes to ISAs, especially stocks and shares ISAs, it can be extremely difficult to find a cheap and reliable ISA provider that also provides you with a wide range of investment options. On my channel, I've actually been talking about Trading212 as a recommended platform for a while. But actually today, I'm here to tell you that I'm not going to be using Trading212 in the new tax year. Hello and welcome to The Nimble Nomad. My name is Arjun and this is the channel where we talk about money and investing related tips, tricks and hacks to survive and thrive in the UK. In case you're new here, I'd really appreciate if you can hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. COVID-19 actually has been a massive driver for a lot of people to start investing or start considering investing. And this actually has resulted in investment platforms and investment apps really kicking off in 2020. And one of the big platforms that actually came out on top as a result of this activity with retail investors is Trading212. Now you only need to do a quick YouTube search to find the number of videos and Trading212 reviews out there to find out how popular Trading212 actually has been. But Warren Buffett very famously once said that you only find out who's swimming naked when the tide goes out. And honestly speaking, some of the recent events that have happened uh, specifically focused on Trading212 have made me feel that the tide is finally out with Trading212 and that actually has resulted in me pivoting my strategy on using Trading212 as my primary investment platform. Now, I know on my channel I have recommended in the past in different videos that Trading212 is the best investment platform out there in the UK. But some of the issues that I've actually had uh, in the last couple of months have made me really think whether Trading212 is geared up to uh, deal with the kind of demand and act as a primary investment platform, whether I want to have them as my investment platform. So let's look at the key issues that I have experienced. I always am honest and transparent with people who watch my videos. So I think this is quite important to share. And then I'll also talk about uh, my strategy going into the new tax year, as in what I'm using as my new ISA and platform provider. Okay, so the first point that I wanna talk about is the technical issues that I've had with Trading212. So on Trading212, you have an option on dividend reinvestment. Now, you can't actually do that for individual stocks directly, but what you can do is you can set something up on Trading212, which is called a pie. And within the pie, if you had just one uh, particular stock set up, or even if you had multiple stocks, uh, what you can do is you have a auto reinvest uh, option available. Now, you, you, it doesn't matter how you set up the uh, buy and what kind of stocks you have them. As long as you've got a dividend paying stock which pays out dividends on a regular basis, you can have that dividend set to reinvest. Now, I've obviously um, you know, set this up for all of my investments. But the dividend reinvestment option actually hasn't worked and it hasn't worked consistently over the past couple of months. Now, this brings me to my second issue, which is quite closely related to the issue number one, which is when I actually complained about this. So I saw a few of my dividends coming through and getting deposited into my account, which was quite annoying because I had the reinvestment set up. And then when I complained uh, to the support team about this, they actually said to me uh, first, they gave me a generic response saying, oh, there's a dividend reinvestment option. You need to go and check whether that's been set up. And I was like, yes, that has been set up because that's one of the default things that I do when I set up the pie. Then they came back and said, oh, you must not have received the minimum amount in dividends in order for it to be reinvested. I think you need something like a one pound at least to be paid out to you so that it can be reinvested. 
but that definitely was not the case because in some instances I had a, a dividend of 50 pounds or even more being paid out and I was like this, this is definitely not working and it was only after I sent like multiple screenshots and exchanged multiple emails with them that they finally admitted that actually it was a issue technical issue that they had identified on the back end and it was swiftly resolved. There was no sort of acknowledgement that, okay, I was actually right. And to me, that really felt like the customer service was not really that great. And this finally brings me to uh, issue number three, which is again related to dividends. So as you know, on my channel, I really advocate uh, the whole concept of dividend investing and a lot of my investments are focused on that dividend reinvestment. Now, recently, uh, one of my major holdings, uh, BP, uh, actually paid out their dividend. So their dividend payment date was the 26th of March. And basically, uh, whilst the company had paid that dividend out, a lot of other platforms received the dividend on the same date but on trading 212 i didn't get the dividend on the 26th of march which was the dividend payment date and i kind of waited for one day two days and then finally a week passed and i started getting a bit frustrated because i was like where is my dividend and why have i not been paid it so i sent an email to the customer service team the support team again and i got an email back saying that it can take up to 14 working days before the dividend is paid into your account i mean that doesn't actually make sense because a lot of other investment platforms where i have dividend paying stocks they pay it almost on the same day or if not on the next working day when the dividend payments are made so i don't understand and why trading 212 takes so long. And the reasons again and again that they constantly say is that it's due to accounting reasons. So I don't know what kind of accounting reasons they have, but frankly speaking, uh, it shouldn't take that long because uh, the dividend payments are for me as a shareholder and trading 212 cannot be the custodian of that money. And I find that really, really strange. So that really has shirked my confidence in trading 212 as a platform because I also then went and did some research on their community and I found a post which was going back all the way to June 2020 where a lot of other people started complaining that their dividends were taking too long to get paid out and that really has kind of made me feel like okay maybe something is not really right here maybe I'm overthinking something here but personally speaking I don't feel really confident with how these dividend repay dividend payments are being made into the account uh, and and therefore I kind of feel like I may need to switch providers now the other thing that if you really think about and this is sort of the bottom line despite all the three issues so they introduce some new fees and that's probably okay because you know you can't run a platform for free but I feel like the lack of fees to a certain degree um, makes me feel like I can't really hold them accountable as an investment platform so if I was paying a fees for maintenance or whatever I feel like I could hold Trading212 accountable for it. But right now I'm using their platform for free, making free transactions. And apart from that foreign currency exchange rate fee that they've recently introduced, I don't have any credibility or liability as a customer to, you know, tell them that you need to provide better service. Of course, there are the usual safeguards of financial regulation within the UK, but from a payment perspective and, and transaction and exchange of service, there's nothing I'm really giving them apart from holding my um, you know account with them with my balances. So this is another thing which has kind of really made me think that maybe I need to pay for a service to get better quality. So which now brings me to my strategy in 2021 and the new tax year. So, the new tax year, I'm actually going to be using free trade and I actually initiated uh, the creation of a new ISA with free trade on the 6th of April, which is the new tax year. So a new stocks and shares ISA. And I've also actually initiated a couple of transfers uh, for my ISAs to be consolidated. One being from Trading212 where I'm transferring over some of my free cash uh, into the new um, uh, ISA. And 
one of the main things that I, one of the main reasons I'm actually doing this is because I think personally speaking free trade charges you a small fee which is that three pounds per month but if you think of it in the grand scheme of things where my ISA amounts over, over collective tax years is going to increase I think that three pounds per month is pretty small also, I think the platform and look and feel of free trade, I've been using their general invest account for a while, and I think it's quite stable and pretty, pretty reliable. It's a UK based company as well. And finally, if you transfer up to 5,000 pounds in um, you know, cash into a free trade ISA account before the 18th of April, uh, free trade has actually said that they will uh, give you a 50 pound share into your account. Uh, so, I mean, it doesn't have to be in the form of cash, even if you do ISA transfers before the 18th of April or initi initiate that process, then you can get a free share worth 50 pounds. Now, when I thought about the mathematics of that, so if I pay three pounds a month for that, you know, ISA technically almost, 15 months uh, of the ISA fees has been waived off because they've paid that 50 pound free share to me. So I'm gonna use free trade in the new tax year. So that that's kind of um, what I just wanted to talk about in this video. Of course, I will still have my Trading212 account, which has all the holdings and ISA funds from last year. And um, yeah, if, if I need to in the future, I can always go back to that uh, Trading212 account. It's just that in this tax year, I won't be able to use it. So I hope that kind of helped you out and gives you some context as to what I'm doing. Of course, if you are interested in free trade, I did a detailed uh, video on free trade as a review. Um, if you want to watch that, I'll add a link of that in the description below and in the end card. So you can go click that and watch that at your own leisure. Uh, I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.